In the last video, we looked at how we could use the URL parsing module built into Elm to pass the token out of the URL. Then we said it'd be really nice if we could store this in our application so that if I'm a user who's just logged in and I happen to refresh the page, I'm not immediately logged out. We're going to do this in two videos. Today, what we're going to do is look at how we can use ports to send the token to JavaScript and put it into local storage. In the video after that, we'll then see how we can check in local storage for the token and send it into our application. So today we'll do the first part and send the token out into local storage. So whenever you need to take a value from Elm and send it to JavaScript, you have to do that for a port. And to have a port, you need to tell Elm that your module has ports. So we just stick the port keyword in front of our module. And let's go and define the port that sends data out to Elm. Typically, I tend to put these ports all at the bottom of the file. I'm not sure why, it's just a convention I've come to stick to. So we're going to say port send token to storage. And it's going to take a string and return a command of type message with a lowercase m. So we can save that. And now let's actually look at, at calling it. So we'll go up to our init where we get the token and we'll return a command that allows them to send the token to storage. So in our init up here, we're returning the model and command.none. Let me just get rid of this. Uh, in fact, we'll leave that debug in. And now in here, what we say, is if we have a token, we need to store it to local storage. I'm just going to do this in the let here just for now. And we'll say commands equals, uh, and what we can say is case token of. And if it's just a token with a value attached to it, which I'll call toc, then the command needs to be uh, send, what was it, send token to storage. I was hoping my autocomplete would help me out there. And we'll pass in the token we want to send. Else if it's nothing, we don't want to have any commands. So that's command.none. And here in our new, we can return our new model. And rather than command.none, we'll return the commands that we want. And we'll hit save. Now let's go into our JavaScript and hook up the code to listen to things being sent on this send token to storage port. So I have my app here. I can say app.port.send token to storage. And this is a port we need to listen to from JavaScript. So we'll subscribe to that. And we should get given the token. And let's just log out got token token. And if I refresh, you can see that we have our new model and then we have the JavaScript logging that we've just got the token. So now we can put this into local storage. So what we can do in here, if we have this token, we're going to call local storage dot set item. And we're going to call it uh, some key that's unique. I'm going to go underscore underscore uh, distinct average score and score. I just like to pick a key that I'm pretty sure no other app is going to uh, try and override. And then we need to store the token, which is a string. So we can just say token. And I'll get rid of this const.logging. And now if I refresh the page and go into the application part of the dev tools, it's a bit hard to make out as I'm at a lower resolution for the purposes of recording a screencast. But you can see we have the distinctly average key here. It's a bit squished up. But down here, you can see the value is the token. And this value matches the one in the URL up here. So this is really nice. We can now store this token to local storage. If I refresh the page, the token will still exist. So now even if I go to slash, let's say slash sign in without a token, which is an invalid URL, uh, and later on we'll use that to show a 404 page, you can see that we still have the token in local storage. In the next video, we'll see how we write JavaScript to send that token into Elm so Elm knows that we're logged in even if we've refreshed the page.